Okay guys, so when I got here today, about 11 o'clock, I just picked everything up and I swept out. And we pushed the tea outside so we could blow the sawdust off of it. There's the pile up. That didn't sweep out. But we had to take this off. Kind of took it all apart. Um, Explain anything about these tanks? I haven't said much yet at all. So here it is. I just took all the, we took all the panels off and that's what I've been doing is just stripping panels. And I was ahead. hoping to have it halfway cladded by now, but uh, we found out the gas tank that we had right behind you there. This one, this is just a homemade tank. It won't fit anywhere. So we thought, well, it'll be a good opportunity to put the original tank back in it. We have a bunch of parts and stuff. Uh, you can parts, see cars. Two keys over there. So there's a frame, right? Mm, where is it? It's right here. This one. There's there's two frames here. There's one with a cab and one without. So we yeah. took the one that without the cab, that's sitting on this side of it, and well, it had a big old hole in the bottom. And then so we went back and took packed it out the, of the tank second out of one. that one. So that's what he's doing now. Is he's working on this? He tried twisting the, the cap off and the whole thing came off so he's got to grind this back out so he can re-solder the piece back in. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, I hit it with the map gas in order to try and get it out and uh, actually kind of popped a little of the aluminum cap off. I'm guessing that's what that is, magnesium aluminum. And uh, anyway, as we were taking it off of there, she said it melts the solder and I tried not to do that. but is what it is yeah. so we uh, ground that up I'll grind this off try to not remove the tinning get it cleaned up solder that back on uh, we did have to chisel out the cap in order to get it to the bottom of the cap you did yep I'll show you yeah I've just got so much to strip yeah. all right so this was stuck in here. All these parts were pretty much stuck in here, whether it be the fuel drains or whatever else. And I tried to do it on this tank first, just to test it and see what I could get out of there. There's see, the hole. This is the hole that we didn't want to use that. So, <clears throat> so we were able to heat it up and and uh, get these out of there. But I did it on this tank first to see if I could do it. And this one, it actually came out because it was a I'll different figure. type of cap, and I was able to chisel it out of there. But on this one, uh, like, I meant, like Tiffany mentioned, this whole pipe piece came off. So what I did is I had to chisel off this way, and that broke it free enough to where it'll twist in and out. I don't know if we'll use this cap or use the other one I've got. Mm -hmm. But now we'll solder all that all back together, and hopefully we'll get this tank set up, and then I can be done messing with this, and I can clad the thing. Yeah, that'll be nice to get done. I'm trying to figure out the best way to strip these parts. Here's this piece. It's pretty good. I just got to redo it, but... So I've done these two today, I've got the hood left, and right now I'm working on the back two fenders, and then this piece that goes over the radiator, so this thing was so caked with um, paint, I couldn't even see that it said Ford there, so that's what I'm doing today. It's a, it's a dirty mess, that's for sure. That's so gross. <laughs> Go ahead. He's going to solder this piece in now. I'm just kind of kissing it around the outside edge because if you get it that scared the crap out of me <laughs> that should do it uh, you know if you if you're tinning something and it's not sticking very well and uh, this didn't do too bad because I didn't remove the tinning already. 
but uh, I didn't want it to pull away so I just heated it up lightly and as I put that in there and that should be plenty good there's a cap at it was right here I thought maybe unless you drink it off somewhere which is very likely did you find it? Oh, it's right there it's right here I thought you said it was right here Good as old. Well, it's a quarter to nine. I just wanted to give an update of how we've been slaving away all day on this thing. <laughs> it's been such a fun project to do. But right now, Chad um, had to tear the box apart here where the gas tank goes. I think we had mentioned earlier in the last video, or the last section, that um, we had to take that old gas tank off the back of the other truck. But anyway, he had to rebuild the seat box, and he put some hinges on it so that it lifts up. And the tank's in there now. So that works good. It's just at the right distance, too, I think, to sit in it, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's perfect it's as far good. as that goes. I wish I wouldn't have screwed up the first time and not had the tank in there. I for totally forgot about the tank. I don't know why, but... Yeah. And then we figured out that we'd stick the battery between here Probably and this here. and this bench, which is also in the back. So when you climb in the back, there's one on both sides. A little one. So we'll be able to stick. They could stick little things in there or whatever. I don't know, tools or whatever. So now, sorry, I'm stuffed up. Um, he is, we decided instead of going with stain, that we would just use black paint. And the reason why we did that, we've done this before, we've had this experience before to where you use this stuff and it soaks in just like stain. Yeah. And it's a whole lot cheaper. You can get this, you know, whatever Walmart stuff for like 96 cents or Menards or wherever is where we got it. Yeah. And it's, really you know, not it's so up, thin yeah. and crappy a paint that it just soaks right into the wood, which is actually perfect for this type of project. So we went with that instead of stain. So it just barely coats it. This is the first coat and it just looks really rustic when it's done. It looks better than stain, really. Yeah. I think it looks great. So he's just right now getting the parts where he's going to clad the metal, so basically the outside. And then tomorrow, I think we're going to do the metal work. Um, I've just been stripping panels all day, and all I have left now are these. This is almost completely done, but um, I have this section down here to do. I need to do the headlights. I put some goop on them, so hopefully they get, um, kind of get soft. And then the front of this is a lot redder because I spread it all over the place, but uh, the front of this, and that's pretty much it. So we'll be doing metal work tomorrow, so hopefully tomorrow we'll have this thing completely in metal, and then we'll be ready for the POR. I don't know if we'll get it. We'll have to see how far we get. We got all day tomorrow too, so. But we've been we've been spending. Well, I wasn't here yesterday because I was sick, but. Um, we've been spending most late nights here till dark anyway, nine nine ten whatever. See manana. Yeah. So I'm stripping off these lights, and I was like really struggling to get these off. So what we did was uh, a three-quarter inch wrench, and we sprayed um, WD-40 on it, and then we used this map gas, and we heated it up so that it would contract a little bit so we were able to spin them out. But man, it took some struggling. These things get rusted in here pretty good. And so really have to heat them up pretty big time when we first we heated it up and then we sprayed this on there it was like the radiator had exploded that's what it looked like but uh that heated it up and then cooled it down enough to where we could get it to start moving
And if you know anything about mechanics, you don't take the nut off. You use the nut to hit against, otherwise you mushroom the threads. If you're banging on it with a hammer anyway. Okay, that should be pretty good, hon. You can probably get it out now. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, uh, you probably should video over here. Over here, I don't want to get too close because these things shine so brightly, but. So, what we're doing is, this is for the side panels, uh, for the roll, part that rolls up. And when you go underneath the edge there, there's a little lip. And we don't have a metal brake this size. So, what you do is you just snap a line and you cut a groove as straight as you can. And then you just keep going back and forth over it till you probably take out about half the metal. And then we've got these little nifty pliers we got at Harbor Freight. And you just grab it and you bend it up slowly. I still have to make a couple more cuts past it. You just run the blade. Just to I score kinda, it? Yeah, I kind of got off line here and you can look underneath. I burned through a little. But oh, that's too bad. I can weld it if I need to. But then you just take this. And you just bend up slightly. Sorry I wasn't doing that. I was looking at that. That's all right. Doesn't matter. I haven't started yet. Just give it a slight bend up. Going a little bit at a time. Like I said, I'll have to probably weld up that section right there. But and you don't want to go back and forth, so just go to your limit. And I've got an angle finder here. With the right angle on it so I can judge where I need to be. But this is a good way to bend the metal if you don't happen to have a shear or a metal brake that's that big. And this angle is pretty close to a 45, but not quite. That's about it. I didn't see it. That's pretty cool. That'll do it. Now I'll just cut it down the middle. And then I'll trim it once I get it up there. We pushed it out again this morning. I just like working outside much better than in there. There's more light. It's ventilated. It's a lot better working out here.